one word, torture. In all seriousness, if you've played Don't Starve or Don't Starve Together, you've probably seen Wes in the character selection screen in his downsides and said, EW FRENCH PERSON GET AWAY! Many feel justified in their prejudice, as Wes has been identified by the community at large to be the most useless character in the game. He's a frail little mute having only 75 in each stat and hitting 25% softer than normal. He can't work as efficiently, taking say 20 hits to down a large tree compared to 15 for other characters. He can't take the cold or heat because he has less base insulation, so good luck in winter. Even God himself despises this mime as he gets struck by lightning more frequently and is attacked by hounds more voraciously. Originally, I had my sights set on tackling one of those 100 day survival challenges, but let's face it, that horse has been thoroughly beaten to death. So instead, I'll delve into the impact playing as Wes had on my survival skills, a journey through the constant, while on some of the most transcendental experiences. My name is Limelichen, and in this video, I'll tell you about how it feels to play Wes. Despite all the obstacles that stand in the way of my survival, you might expect me to endlessly lament about how much tougher my life has become. But strangely enough, I can't complain. Instead, I've discovered a newfound sense of purpose and determination. With death looming at every turn, I've learned to act swiftly and decisively. Maybe because of the initial pressure brought on by all these handicaps, I was driven to invest significant time in PREPARATION. Diligently pre-crafting campfires, meticulously stocking provisions for long commutes, and ensuring that I'm always equipped with a weapon and necessary tools, or at least the resources to craft them on the spot. While these things may seem like common sense for a survival game, bear in mind that other survivors possess advantages that I would typically rely on and take for granted, such as Willow's lighter, Wigfrid's regeneration, or Warley's portable cooking stations. It's a tough pill to swallow, especially with 760 hours under my belt. It's kind of embarrassing to say that I often drop the ball when it comes to being prepared. More often than not, I dive into situations without thinking them through, leaving me wide open to all sorts of trouble that could easily do me in. If that wasn't bad enough when playing solo, it also makes me a bigger burden to my buddies than I care to admit. No! It's not as if Wes has no utility. He has his balloonomancy items, which consist of an inflatable life vest, which prevents damage from getting your raft capsized, the speedy balloon, a makeshift walking cane slash flare, a lightning proof hat, a party balloon which restores about 16 sanity when popped, and those standard balloons which deal 5 damage each. But all of his items have short durability timers of only a day. Once they expire, they become normal balloons and are all just as fragile as Wes. Wes's smaller max hunger cap means big dishes like meaty stew or honey ham are a no-go, cause they just go to waste. Instead, I relied on the tried and true meatballs to keep me fed. And when food was scarce, I reached for juicy berries as they provided quick satiation. Plus, with all his other stats being on the lower side, I didn't need to munch on as many pierogies to restore my health. Nor did I load up on sanity items, as just a couple of cooked cacti or green mushrooms did the trick to keep my inner demons locked away. Sure saved me some resources, but getting my hands on food was still a pain in the ass. Being a mime, Wes can't talk to plants, so I had to rely on other tools like phonograms or one-man bands to play music to the crops instead. Those are handy gadgets that other characters use too, but early on I was short on gold, so it was tough. Yeah, maybe I could have not put a whole ocean between me and the Pig King. And then there's the issue of getting meat. His weak swings made combat a bit of a drag, which was a bummer because fighting is the best way to attain rare and valuable loot. I couldn't just skip a whole chunk of the game. A 25% reduction in damage is huge in this game, and was the stat I was worried about the most. For smaller creatures, this doesn't cripple me that much. Maybe a spider will take an extra hit to kill, but boss fights were drawn out and that stupid sanity aura mechanic became my worst nightmare. Characters like Wendy and Maxwell have tools to offset their weaker damage or lower base stats, but Wes has no aces up his sleeve. Except for maybe beefalo taming, but I'll cover that in a minute. What he does have is endurance. Remember how I mentioned earlier that Wes has a debuff on his work efficiency? Because of that, his tools lose less durability per swing. And this also carries on to melee weapons. Dark swords go from having 100 uses to almost 130. Full sight clubs get 267 uses up from 200. And fire and ice staves have about 7 more uses. 
Funny how that debuff actually makes tools more efficient. Alternatively, you could use a hand bat if you're concerned about weapon durability, which I did when fighting the Moose Goose, and with animation cancelling you can dispatch enemies fairly quickly, even if it's slower than the rest. Or you could just die like I did the first time I tried to fight her. Wes's low health also gave me courage in a kind of convoluted way. That low health was less of a barrier and more like a motivator to keep myself humble and on my toes to avoid damage at all costs, inadvertently making me better at kiting. Who knew having such brittle bones was a teachable moment? <laughs> you guys are probably shitting on me in the comments. This game is easy, how could you be bad at kiting, Lime? I said I had about 760 hours logged, not 2000 like some of you in the audience. Regardless, Wes is not all strife, as there's one thing you can do to salvage this character. You can take time from early game and have a beefalo tamed by the first winter. I did not do that. For some reason, I can never think of taming a beefalo before I need one. Do not do what I do, and be proactive. Back on track. Beefalo can be tamed in about 21 days, provided that they are well fed. They have three special temperaments, but the one you'd want for a west run is the ornery beefalo. All beefalo have similar stats, but the ornery beefalo has the shortest buck time, or the amount of time you can ride them without being bucked off, the lowest obedience so they must be fed before ridden, and have increased damage from 34 to 50, and even higher with a war saddle equipped. With the power of your bovine companion, you can entirely negate damage to you as the enemies will attack your mount instead, and travel the constant with ease as you zip around unabated by life's problems. That's all well and good, but what about team synergies? I hear you frantically typing in the comments. I know, I know, this is a don't starve together video, so it wouldn't be a DST video without talking about teamwork. And and well... Wes is not exactly the MVP when it comes to teamwork. I mean, sure, he's got his balloons, but let's be real here. What good are they in a fight, or when you're trying to gather resources efficiently? The Forge game mode was his moment to shine. He could draw enemy aggro away from the team and had a faster run speed, but now that's gone and Clay hasn't thrown him a bone since. Well, I guess you could use balloons as diversions or use them to bait traps, but again, his usefulness is extremely niche. Honestly, Wes is the kind of character you'd be better off playing solo. Whether you're a homebody who never leaves their base, a massive tryhard boss rusher, or even a complete noob, I think Wes is the pill all DST players should swallow to really hone their skills. Wes for me was an enlightening experience into my true potential as a DST player. Before, even at my experience level, I was still exhibiting newbie behavior. But like a sword cast and forged in flames and quenched in cold oil, I was hardened and made battle ready. Now I can say that I've been molded by and know how it truly feels to play Wes.